Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's video, we are looking at the essential tools, otherwise known as essentials here in Luminar Neo. And more specifically, we are focusing at the tool number one called develop. Now, depending on what format of image you're editing in your Luminar Neo, you may be also going to see an option called develop raw. Now we will be covering the develop raw in the next episode. So today we are looking just at the basic tool, as you can see here on the screen. Now, how are we going to do this today? So we're going to use this image as an example right here. And we're going to go through each of the tab and each of the sliders just as usual. Now, if you've been photographer for a while, you will be familiar with most of these tools. So you feel free to just jump between the different sections and just learn what you need to learn. However, I want to make sure that we cover every single one of those sliders. So first of all, we are looking at the light tab. And inside of the light tab, there are four sliders. Starting with the export here, the slider adjusts the global luminance of an image, moving it to the left result in a darker image, moving it to the right results in a brighter image. So very simple, moving it to the right brighter, moving it to the left darker. Very simple exposure slider. Slider number two, smart contrast. Now this is very um, interesting slider. It's not your usual contrast. And the reason being is that this slider adjusts the contrast of an image. And when we're talking about contrast, contrast refers to a difference between luminance or color that allow you to distinguish object in an image from one or another. Now, if you ever talk about contrast before, when it comes to photography, and this can be quite nicely used in composition, there are two types of contrast again. The difference between dark parts and bright parts, and also the color difference, the color contrast between the different parts. For example, like the green and the dark black here, or the pink and the blue. So that can be all adjusted with the smart filter. Now, the smart capability of this filter is that when it shifts the color, it prevents details from becoming blocked up. So let's have a look at it. When I push the smart contrast on one side, the difference between the different colors and the difference in luminance or bright becoming stronger. So I can push it all the way. And once again, please follow me by pushing the sliders all the way so you can really see the difference and learn what they do. There's no point of pushing it just a little bit and not really noticing what they do. So all the way, as you can see, really makes a push when it comes to contrast of colors and also the brightness. And if you want to make your picture a little bit more flat or for some reason it's too contrasty, you can push it all the way to the other side. It creates a little bit of a washout effect. And again, it's something what can be handy when you're working on different type of project. When we're working with all of these sliders, it's important to remember that when you double click on the name of the slider, it resets them to zero or the original value. Moving on to the next slider, we're going to be covering highlights and shadows. Now, starting with the highlights, this slider adjusts the brightness of the brightest area of an image. It's really as simple as that. Don't let anybody fool you in trying to make it too complicated. Imagine the brightest area of your image and with this slider, you're adjusting their brightness. Obviously, moving it to the right causes already bright areas to become brighter, while moving it to the left makes them darker. So we are focusing on the brighter areas, so you can see them here and here, or the water. So when we push it toward right, they just become brighter, as you could see on this example and on this example. And when we push the slider the other way around, they become darker. So the highlights adjust the brightest area of an image. Now, knowing that, 
you already know the answer for what does the shadow do. So the shadows, this slider adjusts the brightness of the darkest area of an image or darkest areas. Moving it to the right causes the darkest area to become brighter and revealing additional details. Moving it to the left make those areas darker. So shadows, we have some dark areas in this this part of the image, this part of the image, also here and probably here. So if I push the shadows, you can see how they become brighter and here as well and here as well. And when I push them the other way around, they become darker. A really simple. Now, when you're editing your image, the starting position usually is pushing the highlights down, making the brighter areas a little bit darker and pushing the shadow shadows up to open them up and bring some of those details back. So the light tab is behind us. We can close it and we can move to the blacks and whites. Very simple here, only two sliders. Let's talk about what they do. Starting with the whites. This slider adjusts the white point of a histogram and white tones in an image. When you move it to the right, the brightest tones become brighter while the histogram compresses to the right. Moving it to the left causes the white tones in the image to become darker as the histogram compresses to the left. To see it, uh, what's a good idea is to open the curves and make sure that you're on the white right here. And then you can see the histogram here. Now I'm aware that at this point, I think the Windows users cannot see the histogram here, but I have no doubt that that will be coming soon. So the ideal position for you is to open the curves, look at the histogram and work with the whites. So when you push it through here, you're making the white point a little bit brighter and whiter. And you're looking at the histogram, how the whites pushing towards the edge of the histogram. So when I push it all the way, obviously this is way too much, but you can see how it's really clipped here. And similarly, the other way around, when I bring them down, I completely crush the whites at this part of the histogram. And really, to be honest, for the blacks, it works exactly the same, just in the opposite direction. This slider sets the black point of a histogram and adjusts the black tones in an image. Moving it to the right makes the black tones brighter as the histogram compressed to the right. Moving it to the left makes the black tones darker as the histogram compressed to the left. So similarly, just watch this part of the histogram. Moving it towards the right, you can see how we're crushing the blacks and making everything brighter. And moving it towards the other direction, you can see how we're starting to clip the blacks. Now, when we talked about the light, we were talking about bringing the highlights down and bringing the shadows up. The next thing you usually do is you come into the whites and you make them a little bit brighter. Just keeping an eye on histogram and adjusting the blacks, making them a little bit darker. You just don't want to clip it all the way. So that's about it. That's the black and whites. That's the light. And while we're here, let's talk about curves. Now, curves. They are a little bit more complicated and we will probably do a full episode on explaining how the curves work in the future. So let's just talk about the functionality and let's not get too deep into it. However, uh, depending what type of photographer you are, some of those photographers would say that this is one of the most powerful tools for adjusting your image tone. It allows you to brighten, darken, add contrast and shift colors. Curves can be applied to all color channels together by using this first tab with the white or to each color channel individually and can help you manually fine tune the brightness and the contrast of an image. Now, once again, you have the color selectors up here. You can change everything globally by using the whites or you can adjust individually reds, greens and blues. Now, when it comes to using the curve, you use something that's called control points. And here in Luminar Neo, you can add up to 10 control points. All you do is you just click on the curve and you keep adding the points uh, wherever you want to. Now, when you drag up the actual point, you add a contrast to an area. And when you drag it down, you lighten the area. Now, let me show you. You can just turn it up and down and similarly here. Now, when you want to remove the point, you just double click on it and it basically disappears. So that's the way to control it from here. Now, once again, depending what kind of photographer you are, you maybe use curves already, so you know how to use them. If you don't, just wait for our upcoming tutorial where we will do deep dive into the curves and explain you so much more about them. 
Now moving to the next tab, we're gonna focus on color and it has some similarities with the tool called color right here. And if you haven't used it before, you can check our video, it's already online and the link to it should be in a corner. Now let's focus on the sliders here. Starting with the white balance, at the moment there is only the S shot option and the reason being is that we're working with the JPEG here. When we're gonna be working with the Develop Pro and I'm gonna be showing you how to use that, there will be other options here. So don't worry about it too much. Moving on to the temperature, right here, the, this slider warms or cools an image by adding cyan or yellow to change its color temperature. So you can make the image warmer, moving it to the one side, or you can make it cooler, moving it to the other side. Moving to the tint, this slider adjusts the amount of green or magenta, and it's useful for removing color cast from an image. As you can see, there is lots of green here. So if I push it towards the pink, some of it disappears, or I can make it even more greener, pushing it the other way around. Moving on, we're focusing on saturation. Now saturation, this slider adjusts the intensity of all colors in your photo. We've been asked this many times, what's the difference between saturation and vibrance? To really simplify it, the saturation will take all your colors and when you slide it to the right, it will make them more intense. When you slide it to the left, it will make them less intense, ultimately to the point and when it becomes black and white. Obviously, when you push it the other way around, everything is getting more saturated. Moving on to the vibrance, this slider adjusts only the intensity of muted colors, ignoring well-saturated colors. It's useful for achieving fine control when adjusting colors. This is what it is. Sometimes you have an image which is quite saturated, but there are some tones which are not popping up. And also, you don't want to make it oversaturated. And that's where lots of photographers go ahead and actually bring the saturation down a little bit and then balance it by pushing the vibrance. So the result is almost same, however, a little bit more natural. But let's reset it. And once again, vibrance really just take the tones that were mute and make them a little bit more vibrant. So let me show you, for example, here you can see how these colors were not really saturated, very much hidden, where all of these are really saturated. When I push the vibrance, these colors stay exactly the same and this is getting so much more colorful. Now it's time to move to the next tab and it's called sharpness. Now similarly the color, let's close that, sharpness has a lots of similar sliders as the details tool. Now if you haven't used the details tool before, we have a video about that coming up and when it's gonna be ready, it's gonna be in a corner of your screen. But right now let's just focus on the sharpness tab right here. So the first slider is called sharpen. Let's talk about what it does. The sharpen tool helps focus soft edges in a photo to increase the clarity of focus. You should use this tool to significantly improve the image quality, while you also have to remember that by over sharpening, you will add an additional noise and grain to your images. Let's give it a go. Anytime you're adjusting sharpness, it's good practice to zoom in at least 100%. Now we can go down here to the screen, we can click on this little arrow and we can click on 100%. Now let's just look somewhere where there is a lots of texture like in this area right here and let's really push the sharpness all the way. Now this is the result and let's have a look at before and after, much more sharper. But let's zoom out and let's zoom into the sky. You can also start to see the noise and the grain we start to add with that. Let me show you before and after so much more noise which brings us to the next sliders first thing to notice is that when i bring the sharpness down the other two sliders are grayed out and that's because both of these sliders are connected to the actual sharpening let's bring it to 100 let's zoom in and let's talk about what they do starting with the radius now this is probably one of the least used sliders unless you know exactly what you're doing with it leave it at 50 but it's always good to know what it does. Now let's talk about the example right here. We have this edge of this stone right here, and obviously it's been edited while I was sharpening it. It became much more sharper. By increasing the radius, the sharpening and the thickness of the sharpening will be much wider. By decreasing it, it will be much smaller. So when I push the radius through here, it will just become everything much more sharper, as you can see on the example here. Also, again, we're adding much more noise. When I bring it all the way down, the sharpening is really 
decreasing and is not as strong. So let's just reset it. And once again, the radius isn't something what's used all the time. However, I think it's handy for you to know what it does. And now let's talk about masking. Now, when we talk about masking in connection with sharpness, this slider controls the zone in which details are amplified. Moving it to the left, increase the size of the zone. Moving it to the right, reduce the size of the zone. Now, why would we use this? Let me give you the example because we have a great picture for this. When I bring the sharpness to 100 and the masking would be on zero, at that point, you're sharpening everything on the image. Even the waterfall, you can see how it's getting sharper and grainier and also the sky. But you don't want to do that. You only want to sharpen certain parts of that image. And really what you're going to do, you're going to push the masking until the point when the sharpness stop being applied to the elements like sky or water. Basically the elements where there are no edges or textures, there's nothing to be sharpened. So most of the time, the ideal value here is between 60 and 70. So let me show you before masking how much of a noise in the sky and water there was and with the masking on 70 how much that improved the actual result so much so much better so masking is definitely something you should be using and again the ideal value is between 60 and 70. now moving to the tab number six it's called noise reduction Let's open that and let's close the sharpness. And really the noise reduction, again, like the previous two tabs, has a connection with another tool in Luminar Neo. This time it's with Denoise. If you haven't used the Denoise tool before, there is a link in the corner of your screen right now and you can learn more about how to use it. Now, when it comes to noise on a digital images, there are two types of noise, the grayscale noise and color noise. And really the grayscale noise look just like a grain on your image and the color noise will bring different colors at the different parts of the image. Usually when you're adding a noise to your images, first you get the grayscale noise and then the color noise afterwards. And that's why we have two different sliders here. Obviously with the luminosity slider, you remove the grayscale noise from an image and then with the color slider you remove the color noise from an image so again similarly like with the sharpness with the noise you really want to zoom in to at least 100 percent again it can be done with this little arrow right here and then you want to just shift the slider and see how much of the noise you're removing i think we're doing pretty good job uh, by shifting it to something like 50 when you keep looking into the sky and i'll show you before and after the result is pretty good now there isn't really a color noise on this image however i'm sure you get the idea by pushing the color slider you will reduce or remove the color noise from your image now by adding some noise reduction to our image we have also made the boost slider available now what it does, it's actually very simple. This slider increases the aggressiveness of the noise reduction. So again, just like many times before in Luminar Neo, this slider works in the relationship with the other sliders. So when I bring the luminosity down and the color down, the boost grays out. When I push the luminosity, it basically becomes available. So when you get to the point when the luminosity isn't doing very good job at removing noise, you can try the boost slider and see if that's gonna be any help. And now it's time to cover the last two tabs in the develop tool. Let's look at the optics, starting with the auto defringe. The auto defringe adjusts or remove halos and edge noise from your image, remembering that it works specifically very well in high contrast areas. So it's always good to have it on. Again, it works better on raw files, but I always like to have it on because I think it's quite helpful. Then we have three sliders. They are heavily used for adjusting the lens distortion. Again, very much with the raw files, but it's good to know what they're about. The lens distortion works with the barrel shape of a lens and you can just adjust to make it a little bit more natural depending on the specific type of your lens. Now the Devignette tool removes any darkening at the edges of an image caused by the lens itself. So again, some of the lenses actually bring vignette with them and this is a tool that it's very handy to remove them from your pictures. And finally, the Devignette midpoint working very much in relation with the Devignette slider. The Devignette midpoint helps to refine which areas are brightened or darkened by the Devignette slider. And finally, it's time to cover the last tab called Transform here in Develop 2. So let's have a look at it. We have a three sliders, vertical, horizontal and aspect. 
And very quickly, because it's very simple, the vertical slider tilts the image vertically to correct for the vertical distortion. The horizontal slider tilts the image horizontally to create straight lines and correct for the horizontal distortion. And to finish it off, the aspect slider. Moving the aspect slider to the right corrects for the horizontal aspect distortion and moving it to the left corrects for the vertical aspect distortion. So you really have to play around with this. It kind of tilts the pictures around and you can see with your image what it does. So there you have it. We went through the basic develop tool here available for all kind of images and all format of images. If you're interested in the develop raw tool, we will be covering that in the next video. So now it's time to get your own Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. All you have to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next one.